What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are having a great day as always. Today's video is going to be a little different. We're going to be comparing the WJ to my Wrangler. I think it's going to be a little embarrassing as a Wrangler owner. However, I'm also the WJ owner, so you know, it'll be proud as well. But we're going to be comparing the Flex and seeing which one will flex more. Honestly, I think that Jeep will probably flex a little bit more, but I'm not sure. So we're going to head out to the hill in the front and we're going to test out the Flex and all that stuff. First things first, I gotta hop out and disconnect the sway bars on the Wrangler. Um, I have no rear sway bars on here, so that's not a worry. I also have no rear sway bar on the WJ. So we're gonna disconnect both front sway bars. I believe the WJ's is already done. Once that's done, we'll go ahead, flex them out, and we'll measure and see which one flexes more, compare the suspensions and all that stuff. All right, so I actually have these kind of cool pins on here that make this super easy, so let's go ahead and do this. Um, these are just from Tractor Supply. They're literally 99 cents a piece pop them off the sides done and these are actually really nice to have they hold up really well and they're 99 cents so you can replace them way better than these pins way easier to get off um, and get back on so definitely if you're interested pick up the gold pins for 99 cents from tractor supply but we got the sway bar disconnected um if you guys don't know about this jeep it's a 2008 wrangler four inch lift from teraflex 40s curry axles all that kind of stuff cool jeep but you know Nothing compared to my 01 Grand Cherokee. It's on a Iron Rock off-road, six and a half inch lift, 37s, and literally that's about it. So let's go ahead and back this thing down to the hill, take a look at what it can do, and compare the two. I think this one is, I think the blue one's gonna flex much more than my Wrangler. Hop in here, should already be on. Sometimes it doesn't like to start because the battery's a little dead, but I left it on so we don't have to worry about that too, too much. So let's go ahead and get it back down the driveway and see what we can do oh i do want to show you guys how much of this tire sticks out when you're driving this car you guys can see it's literally almost the entire tires out it looks cool um i like it a lot but you can't keep this jeep clean you can clean it and on the drive home it's going to get disgusting again so let's angle ourselves right so we can flex up on this hill and see what it'll do so this is kind of just like my little personal flex hill out here in the front of my yard and it does the job i mean I can't max out the Grand Cherokee on it, I don't think, but it does the job for the Wrangler and everything. So we'll head on up this hill. Hopefully it doesn't slide down or flip over. All right, so I think my back passenger side tire is currently off the ground. We're not getting any traction whatsoever. So we're going to go ahead and park here and hop out, make sure that's the case, and see what's up. All right, so that tire is definitely not getting enough traction to go. You can tell because it's just sliding on top of the leaves and the grass and everything. But it is a fair amount of flex, honestly. One thing to keep in mind is this Jeep's on short arms. It's not on long arms yet. I do regret putting short arms on this Jeep because I did go all out with the rest of it. I'm not sure why I didn't with the lift itself. But this side is always the cool side to look at when it's flexing. And I mean, it is flexed, but it's nothing crazy, honestly. It's dropped down, and I'm not sure what's maxed out. I believe it's the shocks that's maxed out, actually, that's preventing it from going anymore. But we can take a look at that by putting different shocks in here someday and seeing what's up. But I mean, the Jeep's definitely flexed. It looks good how it is. Definitely have room for the 40s. Let's check the back here. So tucked up pretty well right there on the back we definitely will have to cut a little bit more if we want to go any farther but i mean it's flexed i do have a lot of bump stops on this thing too to prevent it from flexing too far and messing up the body panels with the tires so that could also be another thing that's really limiting us here at a certain point it'll just start twisting the body or twisting the front more than the back so that honestly might be maxed out for the back but as you can see i mean the coils are no danger of coming out right now I mean, it's a solid setup. It's flexed a decent amount, but it's nothing crazy, to be completely honest with you guys. It's nothing insane, but it is flexed. It does the job. It looks good because it's so wide flex out. I can't wait for the Grand Cherokee to look like that. And I'm also interested to see if the Grand Cherokee is going to flex a little bit more than this. Personally, I think it will. I don't know about you guys. Comment down below right now without cheating. Which one do you think will flex more? The Grand Cherokee or the Wrangler? I think it's going to be the Grand Cherokee. So let's hop up there and see if we can get it started. All right, let's see if the WJ wants to turn on today. Perfect. It does not. Let's hop out and see what's up. I think the terminals are loose ever since. I was messing with that the other day. So let's pop the hood. Should be 
good now. Okay, we're good now. Um, I do have new terminals on the way for that that have extra posts for more auxiliary lighting stuff. So that'll be cool once those get there. That's why I'm not too worried about that. But let's go ahead and take this thing down to the hill. Honestly, I think this thing should flex more than the other Jeep. Ignore that. It's just rubbing. And here it is, the budget Jeep all flexed out. And I can already tell you this is flexed so much more than the Wrangler. I mean, these are already about to fall out. We do have to figure that out with the bottom there, getting a strap or something like that to hold that in place. The top, um, I might get longer coil retainers. I'm not sure yet. But this is by far more flexed out than the Wrangler. It's not even close, honestly. Other side is fully compressed. This side is basically as far extended as I want to go because I don't want to drop that coil out. The back is flexed up pretty good. I think that would go a lot farther. It's just the hill's not the correct shape or angle or anything. This side, front tire is tucked. Is as tucked as it's going to go. The back is dropped down. It's kind of hard to show this on camera because it's such a weird angle. The car is like almost on its side here and I'm sitting in the road trying to record this. The front is insanely tucked. I do have a little bit more trimming I have to do in there. But this, like I said with the Wrangler, this is the side that always looks cool when we flex it up on the hill. And I can tell you right now that this thing is much, much more flexed out, much, much more travel than the Wrangler. And honestly, I'd be a little embarrassed if I was taking that Wrangler off-roading. And this thing pulled up and just outperformed me so, so much. But it's cool because they're both mine and it's okay. And the whole point of this Grand Cherokee is to build an insane off-road rig. We started with the Iron Rock off-road six and a half inch long arm kit. And I'll tell you what, this kit performs amazing. 100% worth all of the money spent on it. Imagine what those people driving by are thinking with this thing just like on its side on this hill in the front yard. Most people think this is like super irresponsible and everything. But I think it's cool. But like I said, this thing 100% beats the Wrangler in articulation. So I think we're both at the same agreement here. The WJ is a little more capable than the Red Jeep so far. Now that's not accounting for lockers or tires or anything like that, that this Jeep has all the switching right here. Since that Jeep's getting some, it honestly, I believe that Jeep will be so much more capable than my Wrangler when it's all done. It'll also be so, so much cheaper than the Wrangler once it's all done, which is really cool because you won't feel as bad messing it up off road. Also one thing, I do want to kind of make some stickers for that. That's like cute Wrangler or something like that, just to make fun of the Wrangler guys. Cause I, since I have a Wrangler, I know how upset they get when any other model Jeep thinks they're better than them. I think that would be really cool. So let me know in the comments if you guys would like to see some stickers or stuff like that for the WJ, kind of making fun at the Wranglers. Now as the Wrangler owner as well, it is a little disappointing to see a $5,000 car outperform my car that probably has, I think I made a video on it once and it was like $50,000 put into it. So honestly, I'm really liking the WJ a whole lot more than the JKU. It's a lot more fun. It's just way more unique. There's Wranglers everywhere. It's a good daily. Um, it's not really a good daily, actually. It's terrible on gas. It's a cool daily. Um, that one will be cooler. But as always, guys, that basically wraps up this video. Let me know about the uh, WJ stuff to kind of make fun of Wranglers. Let me know if you guys would like to see that. I can definitely make that happen. As always, guys, thanks for watching today's video, and I'll see you in the next one.